Once again, I'm talking money, one of my favorite topics, and women. Money and women today. We've been talking entrepreneurship mostly for the last, the last few times um, and making money. This time, I want to talk making money, women, and entrepreneurship because this is all about <laughs> making money. So... I am wanting to talk about, so I just recently had a little Facebook conversation with uh, someone and it, it was around women in the WNBA not making as much money as men in the NBA. Yeah, of course, most people know that. Um, however, this particular fellow, fella, whatever we're calling it, um decided that it was women's fault that women in the WNBA did not make uh, money. <laughs> um, and said that women are quick to turn it around to make it seem like it's misogynistic or societal or, you know, gender bias that women don't make as much money, but it's women's fault. Yeah, process all of that. I hope mostly men are on here too. It's women's fault that women, more specifically women in the WNBA, but women don't make as much money as men. Right. So I want to just expand on that. I won't spend a huge, but I want that to sink in. Um, if you are wondering why, um, there are things that I don't often talk enough about as far as things that may hinder us from making money because I do believe and as you know from meditation and different things like that I do believe in focusing on the thing that's going to bring me more of the abundance that I want um and if I'm drying off a little bit I might just wash my hair um and so focusing on the things that I want however there are going to be things that attempt to block us and that's why i don't focus on them because it's just an attempt and they can something that's an attempt it's not necessarily a reality and something that's not a reality doesn't necessarily require energy so that's how i feel about misogynistic societal uh blocks but they do exist so um as women in this society uh making money does come with its own level of resistance I'll just say it like that. It does come with its own level of resistance. Something that I notice a lot, and this is one of the things as an entrepreneur, as a person in business, because um, entrepreneurship is when you are the CEO or owner of your own company. However, even if you're working with somebody, you're still a company of one presenting yourself inside of that organization so i think you should still look at it like you are the owner of your presentation your skill and the things of that nature so one thing i do notice being woman in corporate well when i was corporate because i'm not sure i would consider my organization or organizations the businesses that i own to be uh organizations and i just incorporated another company so i let you go just started another one that is a corporation um, I do notice that when I'm in negotiations with men who come to me and want to work with me, come to me and want to work with me, that there is a level of, I shouldn't have to, I'm not speaking a woman, I'm speaking my experience and what I do in those situations, um, what I do in those situations and how I overcome it. So I do find that when I'm in negotiations with men uh, who want to work with me and re I mean, something happened recently. So I wanted me to help them um, better organize and set up their business. And he was a male. I work with both male and females, mostly females. That when we told him and my assistant was there, the price, he was like, oh, no. And so for some reason, it's it's this misconception that women are supposed to command less. Like we're supposed to command less than men in those same roles. Um, and that is not the case. 
And so as a woman, I just want to give you some tips if you are experiencing that. And I experienced it a lot more earlier on um, in my journey as a business owner than I do now. I think now I have more um, respect on my name, <laughs> uh, especially in the city where I reside. But now I have more receipts, so I don't get it as much, but I, stu I still get it. One of the things that you can do to... Just stop all of the chatter about your prices being your price, woman or man. But more specifically, I want to I wanna highlight the women because, like I said, I just had this conversation and this guy was saying, it's just y'all fault. Y'all don't make enough money. It's y'all fault. Y'all don't make as much money as us. And that's the nerve. Um, but one thing you can do that we do inside of my businesses and that I recommend to the clients that I work with is to make sure that you have your pricing already set. Sorry, I washed my hair. It's dripping everywhere. Make sure that your prices are set, especially if you're service-based. If you're product-based, your, your prices should be set. If you're product-based, your prices, and last time we talked about having both services and products in your streams of income. But if your product-based, your, your prices should be set and displayed. If you're working inside of another business to overcome having to haggle with customers and them getting frustrated, your product prices should be set and displayed. Services. I don't necessarily recommend all of your pricing, especially your VIP and premium pricing, be displayed if you are service-based. However, entry-level and um, base model pricing for your services should be displayed and standard across the board. Like this is what I charge. Regardless if you are male or female, green or blue, this is what I charge. My price is my price. Now VIP, more premium, more customized pricing, I don't, I don't recommend displaying them because they are uh, itemized and you know, they can be changed based on the needs. But your base pricing have it already written out. It also helps you when you are discussing your price, saying you can just go to your price list and be like, um, yes, for that I charge. You're more confident as well in having that. And that's one thing that we incorporate because I'm not always able to talk to every client and I have other people. So we have the price is the price. Um, and that's one thing. And if they can haggle, I was about to say what they want, but I don't want to say that on here. <laughs> they can haggle with someone someone else because my prices are set and that's what it is. Um, another way you can overcome it is to, so one thing that I did, I don't, it's really unfair, but one thing that I did a lot of when I was first starting out, I stopped working. Girl, I'm just realizing that a lot of this is really rooted. So in our society, I stopped working with men in the beginning because they would give me the most trouble about. Now, this is not saying all men because I know I'm going to get a low flat, especially, you know, when the podcast airs. However, this is going. This is this is my experience a lot earlier on. This is not now. Now, you know, I have more receipts. So maybe men want more receipts. See, I'm making excuses. It was just no excuse. But I had a lot of men who would give me a lot of trouble about my pricing in the beginning. A lot. And so I, one of the things that I did early on, I'm not suggesting this. I found that it was when I would have meetings with men, um, I had a lower percentage in the beginning of turning them, converting them over to a client than I did with women. So I focused my attention on the client that bought in the highest conversion. So, you know, have that being, um, you know, whether your clients are children, like that's standard in business as well. Whoever you figure out, some people call it your avatar, you figure out your client, the people who spend the most money with you and that's who you target. So in the beginning for me, it was women. It is still mostly women, like 72, and it, it kind of fluctuates a little bit on the higher end. Um, when I mean by higher end, it's always over 50% women. But sometimes it's 65% women, sometimes it's 85% women. But it's always majority women. So what ends up happening is now I focus my resources 
my time and my attention, my marketing on women. Um, and so now moving ahead, if you're just joining, um, talking about my experience of being a woman in business, a woman making money in business. Now I work with both. Um, more so now also because I have a, a higher level of confidence because like I said, my price is my price. I used to feel away in the beginning. Now I'm like, I wish the nerve of you, regardless of who you, the nerve, you know, you pay me, but I also feel uh, my value level. I'll say that about myself. My value level has, um, shifted as well. So those are the first two things I would do. One is have set prices. Product-based uh, organizations, I would display my pricing and have it set. Uh, I just wash my hair. Um, Service-based, your base model pricing, your basic pricing, your, your lower tier pricing that is general. Um, display that. It sets that when, when somebody call your price is your price, it's easy for you to pull out your paper, your employees, or oh, that'll be five ninety nine, dollars sir. And you can tilt your head with that and everything. Um, and then the second thing is, if you are having trouble in a certain arena trying to work with a certain client, stop until you perfect working with your ideal client. If I sell baby tees with little alligators on it, literally not baby tees that grown women wear because they accentuate the body, but baby tees, like little toddler baby tees, right, with alligators on the front. Would I market that to bodybuilders? No. I would market it to babies. More specifically, I would run some commercials on cartoon channels. I would market it to women with babies so they can buy it for their babies. I would do events that are focused on babies. The same thing in money. If, you, if the majority of your clients are women, you do not spend the majority of your marketing dollars trying to convert men to buy your product you focus on the people who are buying um and that's what i did i did that because i didn't want the trouble but now being in business for a while i realized it was very smart even talking to you i'm like huh look at me i ain't wasting no time probably because they was giving me trouble but you know so focus on who who focuses on you and then after you grow, then you can start to expand your net. When you see that there's a certain arena, like in the tax business that I'm the CEO of, um, that one, it just depends on who needs their taxes done. People, it's not really either or. In the, um, in the consulting business, it is majority women. It is majority women. And I did a live with one of my friends, I think in 2019, before Corona hit, um, and one of the things that we had a lot of questions about because we were doing events, why didn't we do an all male event? And it was because women are the ones who come to us asking us for these events and who show up. So that's who we do them for. That's who want this, this healing and this mindset shift. So those are the, the three main things that I would suggest you find your sweet spot in if you notice, um, you're having some resistance in an area. So I really do focus a lot of my marketing dollars. Like I have some marketing campaigns running right now. And when I tell you, it doesn't even take into consideration who's not people who are not in my um, clientele base model avatar, whatever we're calling it. Like if you, if I ran my insights and my analytics and it didn't include you, or a group of people, then I'm not marketing to you because you don't normally buy my services and products. Now, could that possibly ex be exclusionary? Possibly, but it could be wasteful for your marketing dollars if you don't learn how to do that sooner. So a lot of that you could take personally. So the conversation is just full circle started off because like I said, I had this very uh, misogynistic, sexist uh, conversation on Facebook with somebody. I didn't take it personal because i don't even know them and you could pay me right now and i would mess up their name you know like your girl said on the housewife no what was it basketball wives you are non-factor and so for things that are non-factors they can be distracting to our money so we keep it moving uh however when figuring out how to make the thing that matters work around things that are non-factors like you you 
you alleviate the non factor, meaning you move past it, and then you say, okay, this clearly doesn't support my mission and my journey to get the highest dollar. So let me figure out what does and let me pour my time, attention, resources, money, and energy into that. Um, and so I gave you a few things that I use, I impart. On, on my clients or I push my clients to use that I know work. Now, this is not something I think works. I know works. Um, and it can shift your business. If these people are not buying, then why market? And some people, and then and this is the last thing because I'm thinking about it. I had a client who I suggested she market to a completely different genre. Your genre is this. Clearly, your genre is this because this is the people you... And so what she did... She continued to market to another genre that wasn't bringing in a lot of money, but she lowered her pricing. Ooh, I don't, we, we'll talk about that another time. Um, she ended up making a ton of money short term or maybe long term. She she did end up making a lot of money from lowering her prices because then with the lower prices, she was able to bring in more people. And it's kind of like Walmart versus Target. Like Walmart's model is we sell everything. Amazon does it now, but Amazon doesn't sell it as cheaply. They do try to compete. Um, but Walmart it initially was we sell everything at a discount price. And so one time they tried to market to people who were higher spenders and it didn't work. So then they focused on selling to people who support or Walmart so they do not market to people who don't like cheaper things budgeted in a certain warehouse type stores they're not going to market to people who like boutique shopping um, and that's the the important thing about when you're trying to expand the money you make also so we talked about products and services this time we're talking about then how do I know who to sell to how do I focus my energy and that's what I would suggest strongly even with certain distractions attempting to come in, I would suggest focusing your energy, resources, money, and time on people, the the ideal customer that normally buys to you. You can expand ever so lightly uh, as time goes on, but don't do a big push to try to include an additional group of people who have not historically purchased your products or services. 